I want to share with you some thoughts about save yourself. You say, is that biblical? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yep. I want to share with you some thoughts of what you can do yourself. Amen. And uh, certainly with regard to redemption, it's, it's Jesus all the way. Amen. His blood. Amen. And there was a wonderful uh, presentation of that this morning. I just want to take it now to personal responsibility. How many of you would like to yeah. find out what God says yeah. about you, yeah. what you can do? Amen. Is there anybody in the house? Uh, okay, some hands are raised. Amen. Hallelujah. You, uh, you got to see that uh, there are powers of binding and loosing that are given to you. And if you would, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 2. I tell people that, uh, you know, probably the revelation is not Acts 2.38 of the power of Jesus' name, but it's in Acts 2.36. For the scripture says in the book of Acts chapter 2, Turn there, and that's where we're going to start, and we're going to go through uh, verse 40, Acts 2. And verse 36 says, Therefore, since we believe that we are the house of Israel, this appeals and applies to us. Amen. Let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made this same Jesus, whom you've cruci crucified, both Yahweh, both Lord of the Old Testament and Christos of the New. Amen. He is Lord and Christ. Amen. He is God. Amen. Hallelujah. When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said, Men and brethren, what must we believe? No, what must we do? We've got to do something about this. Amen. He said, Here's what you do. Repent. Repentance is always through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Be baptized in water, blood, water, spirit. Hallelujah. There are three that agree in earth. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. The blood, the water, and the spirit, and these three keep covenant. These three are in agreement. These three are inextricably bound. Now, that's not the message that I want to share with you. I, I, Though I believe with all of my heart in Jesus' name, baptism, hallelujah, and it's into the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And they, they harmonize perfectly. Yeah. And when you see that revelation, and I had pastored a Baptist church, and I, now I was in a first-line de denominational Pentecostal church. And when that came to me, through Ed Marks and Frank Dare, those two men, they crossed my path in 1971, and I got baptized in the dead of winter in northwest Pennsylvania, and it was cold. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I saw. The scales dropped off of my eyes. I could see plainly the kingdom of God. And on the heels of this, this, all of a sudden, there were doctrinal positions that were changing within me. And there were things that I had believed and adhered to. And all of a sudden, they just melted away into nothingness because I was taken up with being born from above. It happened. It was as real to me as baptism in the Holy Spirit. Amen. It changed my life. Baptism in water. It changed my life. Yeah. I charted a new course. But that's not what I want to share with you. Here's what I want to share with you. Peter preached Acts 2.38. Blood, water, spirit. 
get saved, get born again. 3,000 gladly heard the word and came in. And that's when Isaiah 65 and 66, a nation is born in a day. Hallelujah. That was the holy nation that was born on the day of Pentecost. Something happened there that never happened before. It was a new activity and move of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And look what the scripture goes on to say in verse 39 and 40. For this promise is unto you and to your children... And many that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, next two words. Save yourselves. Save yourselves from this wicked and untoward generation. Save yourself. A lot of people want to have the pastor do all the saving. He saves me. No, you save yourself. Amen. You can save yourself a lot of grief by getting in this word. Amen. Devouring it. Hungering and thirsting after Amen. righteousness. And it's a guarantee you will be filled. Yeah. Now, how do you save yourself? Well, let me tell you something. There are demonic powers that move in the realm of the occult. And I'm not a negative preacher, but Eastern religions are filled with the cult, Amen. mentality, yeah. sensates, impressions. Yeah. Hollywood is filled yeah. with the occult. Yeah. Here, I, I listed some things last night, and I started writing, and I just kept on writing. Yeah. If you want to... Get rid of demonic strongholds and save yourself. Then get rid of pornography, Amen. Ouija boards, palm reading, channeling, Hare Krishna, yoga, transcendental meditation, levitation, fortune telling, tarot cards, worldly festivals, yes. Yes. hypnotism, Amen. incantations, psychotropic drugs, yes. charms, gargoyles, dungeons, dragons, extrasensory projection, Astral projection, witch, witchcraft, voodoo, Mardi Gras, nudity, black magic, seances, spirit guides, Scientology, astrology. That's not sidereal astrology. But clairvoyancy, GMO foods, non-biblical foods, catatonic gazing, occult music, and Kabbalah. Get rid of that. Close the door Amen. to the gateway of your mind. Save yourselves Amen. from this wicked and untoward generation. Yes. Yes. Purge Amen. your mind and wash it in the word. Cleanse your motives. Purify your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. And character weaknesses in your life will be replaced with supernatural strength. Amen. Will happen. Amen. Hallelujah. Save yourselves. What else? 2 Corinthians, turn there, please. And Brother Jason, I tell you what, this really did bless me this morning when you said, boy, it's refreshing to hear the rustling of pages as you're turning in your Bibles. You know, when I pastored a Baptist church, I'll tell you what, those folks were scriptorians. And they opened their Bible, they were checking me out. 1966 to 68, First Baptist Church. They were right on board. And, uh, but when I, because of the infilling of the Holy Spirit, notice that I wear black pants. Why do I do that? So the boot black, as they're kicking me out, doesn't show up on my pants. I got that from Fred Gabler. <laughs> I did. Um, <clears throat> but when I went to the Pentecostal church, very few people brought their Bibles. You know, because what was it? Experience related. Give me an experience. Well, I, I'll tell you what. I did find out. When I read Calvin's Institutes, it produced 
a great love that I was secure in my salvation. I mean, brilliance. You know, they have the, they talk about um, Calvin's flower in the acrostic T U L I P tulip. That's the flower of the once saved, always saved as such. That's, I mean, that's a broad spectrum. But T was total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and perseverance of the elect, T-U-L-I-P. That's the Calvinist flower. But the uh, Arminians have a flower also. It's called the daisy. He loves me, he loves me not. He loves me. You, you you don't know from one moment to the next, you know. Oh, this this did happen to me. I was 15 years old. Never went to the movies. And this girl had a blue eyes, ponytail, blonde. And she said, would you like to go to the movies? <sighs> yeah. I'll never forget when I went into that theater that night. I was saying, oh, God, please don't, don't let the rapture take place. I know I will never leave. Oh, God. Do you think it was Gidget at the seashore? Like, that's going to be a bad movie. My, Im the imprints of my hands on those chairs, wooden, and the armrest, I, I left the imprint of my hands in it. Oh, Jesus, please don't come. My God. Do you think I enjoyed the movie? Didn't even remember one thing. But when I left, she said, did you enjoy that? Oh, yeah. It was just... <laughs> Wonderful. But the fear you got, you're walking some kind of emotional tightrope. Now, that's not an endorsement from me to go to a theater. I know that our God has provided us a salvation, but you can save yourself a lot of grief. And save yourself by staying in the Word of God, purifying your mind, thinking good things. The Bible tells you what to think about. Hallelujah. Whatsoever things are pure, of good report, that edify, build you up. Let's look at this second scripture because time is moving on. And 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. First word, first two words are what? Examine yourself. Whether you're in the faith. And then what? Prove yourself. First, it says, save yourselves from this wicked, wicked generation. Next statement is here in 2 Corinthians 13, or, yes, 13, 5. Examine yourself. It's good to give yourself an examination. Then prove yourself. How do you prove yourself? How does God prove you? He puts you through the test. Amen. Now, he'll never tempt you to do evil, but he will test you. Number on the left-hand column of your paper, 1 through 10. That's, that's a quick test, right? Then you want the big test. It's 1 through 40 <laughs> or 1 through 25 vocabulary test. Do you remember those days in school? And the teacher was actually criticizing you and testing you, but it wasn't hypercriticism. It was to see if you've learned the lesson for the week. On Fridays, usually it took place. Now, a quickie test, 10 
could be any day of the week, but the 25 or the 40 questions or the major test, are you passing the test? Examine yourself, prove yourself. That's what the scripture's talking about here. Now this next scripture, I mean, I really could spend a lot of time here uh, in the book of Ruth. And uh, we'll give you a little backdrop on Joshua Judges Ruth. I passed by it here. Okay, Ruth chapter 3. Now this is a very sad story. It talks about Naomi. Her husband died, mm -hmm. and then she had two boys, and her two boys died, and she had two daughters-in-law, and she said, don't, don't call me pleasant, Naomi means pleasant, call me bitter, call me Mara, I'm bitter at God. That doesn't mean that somebody that's bitter doesn't know the principles of the Bible. People can be bitter and still give information to somebody that's younger, though they don't partake of it, and you, but you can. Amen. People get upset at the way the Lord deals with them in their life. But do you know there's something I love about our Savior, Jesus? On the cross, he refused the gall and the Amen. vinegar. He refused the bitterness. He never became bitter. Amen. He drank the cup to its dregs, never became bitter at his father. Amen. And I've said, God, keep me from bitterness Amen. because bitterness, will a bitter spirit will contaminate not only yourself, but many others Amen. will be defiled. Amen. The scripture says here, this bitter woman... Naomi, her mother-in-law, boy, I'd like to take you on a trip through Ruth to see the progression that she was gleaning in the fields and uh, it was by herself. Then she was with the other gleaners and she came alongside in handfuls on purpose and then, and then it goes, you know, she actually, I'll get ahead of myself here, she ended up owning the whole field. Amen. Hallelujah. You work all day, all day, and gain one measure of yeah. grain. Yeah. But the scripture goes on to say here, she spent one night at the feet of Boaz mm -hmm. saying, I need to be covered, cover me. Yeah. And uh, the next morning, he said, pull out your apron. And he put in six measures of meal. Six plus one is seven. <laughs> Bringing you to a place of perfection in God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I did get ahead of myself, but it says, um, Naomi, chapter 3, verse 1. Her mother-in-law said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? Here's this Naomi who's been bitter. As a matter of fact, to show you, in, turn to chapter 1, verse 20. I've got to prove so that you can see for yourself. <clears throat> she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. I want you to see it on, on your own. Yeah. And now we'll go to chapter 3 because a couple of days have gone by. It says, <clears throat> Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, <clears throat> shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? And now is not Boaz of our kinsmen, with whose maidens thou wast? Behold, he winnoweth barley tonight in the threshing floor. Verse 3 is what I want you to see. First two words, what? Wash, Wash thyself. We'll deal with these separately, but I want you to see the next. Therefore, and what? Anoint, Anoint thyself. <clears throat> and actually, put thy raiment upon thee. Clothe thyself. Yeah. Yeah. 
and get thee down to the floor, but make not thyself known unto the man till he shall have finished eating and drinking. Wash yourself. Anoint yourself. Clothe yourself. Hallelujah. You say, really? Oh, yeah. Now, I can tell you this. There's nothing that I know of that is sweeter than to get a little baby three, four months old <laughs> and take them and put them in the kitchen sink. How many of you have done that before? In the kitchen sink and, you know, they're so happy, splashing water all over you. And just so happy, warm, tepid, nice water. And you can't expect a baby to wash themselves. So that when they're little, you wash them. But their, their cheeks are rosy and then you pour water, a little cup of water on their head and it rolls down and make sure that it's the right kind of soap. <laughs> and it doesn't get in their eyes and they're, ju they're just like little cherubs and you wrap them in a couple towels, dry them off and they're so happy. But I've got a boy that's pastoring in England He's 54 years old. You think he's saying, Dad, wash me. Bathe me. <laughs> hey, boy. You got one oar up out of the water. Something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Your elevator doesn't go to the top floor and all those things. Hey, no. That, that was when you were in infancy. You're no longer a spiritual dwarf. You're not a spiritual pygmy. Wash yourself. God expects us to take the water of the word and to wash ourselves. To, to find that free flow of the water of life and the refreshing, cleansing power of the word. Wash yourself. Now to get this, on video or on tape so you can do this on your own. We do not have time. But wash yourself is Isaiah 116, Psalm 51, verse 2, verse 7, uh, Ephesians 5, 26, Revelation 1, 5, and 6. That's wash yourself. Now, anoint yourself. How do you do that? You get down on your knees and you seek God and you pray. Hallelujah. I, I, I can tell you this of a truth. I was so, when I came into the understanding of the kingdom message, the church asked me to leave. And uh, they said you can come back anytime when you're willing to submit. And if you deny the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'd lay my arm on the table so you could cut that arm off. I will never deny the valid, biblical, scriptural experience Amen. that God can give us. Amen. And when I got baptized in the name, it was the same way. They said, you're going to have to leave. So be it. Well, didn't have a church. You've heard of a man without a country. I was a man without a church. I was looking for people. And believe me, they did come. They did come. Northwestern Pennsylvania, we had a, a wonderful move of God. But I said, <clears throat> I got to find something to do. And so, uh, to make money, I've got four kids. And they're, you know, really young and they're close together. And I've got to put shoes on their feet and clothes on their body and food in their belly. So, I'm going to become a painter. Houses, not artistry. <laughs> so I became known as the saints with the paints and the holy rollers. <laughs> <clears throat> and I, you know what I'd do? I'd paint a house and uh, I'd go out and preach. If they didn't pay me or, you know, silver and gold have I none. <laughs> That kind of thing. I, I would come back home and paint another house. But the, 
the greatest times of revelation. I can tell you this, when I was up on a 32 or 40 foot ladder, yep. painting away, the presence of God would come over my life and I would see truths in the word of God. God would whisper something in my spirit and there would be a puddle of tears or a dripping of tears down that, those ladder rungs. And I'd have to come down and just worship the Lord. And that, that is a school of the Spirit. It's a time of endearment to me when oh, I was taught by many other people, believe me. And I thank God for voices that established things in me that could tell me, get anointed. I remember going over to, I, it was Scotland, a Bible school there up in Peterhead, way up there, near Lewis, the awakening of the New Hebrides. And there was a move of God. Asked to preach, spoke at St. Anne, uh, one of the big halls in England, and uh, know of a measure what it is to speak to large crowds. That doesn't move me. It's people in a congregation, the Lord said, I will send forth fishers in the book of Isaiah, and they shall fish them. Amen. That's casting out. The net. That's why Jesus said there was that time of fishing. Yeah. And he said, I come, Peter, John, James, Andrew, I will make you to become fishers of men. And that was the, that was the sign in the heavens of Pisces, fishers. But back in the 1960s, There was another sign that was given, and it happened to be the Lord saying in Jeremiah, and you shall hunt them. It shall come to pass, you shall hunt them. A hunter is much more different than a fisherman. When you cast out the net, you bring in good and bad. But when you're hunting, and there were people in congregations that I would speak to, and they would pull information right out of me. I wasn't planning on going in a particular direction, but the anointing in that individual would pull something right out of me, and I would lift up the scope. Mm, yeah, get that sighted, get that uh, uh, sight, that uh, crosshairs on them, and I knew that this was a person for the kingdom of God. I was hunting them, and that's what we're doing in this day. We're Hunting candidates for the kingdom of God. Not everybody wants to do this. Very few, as a matter of fact. Jesus said, will you leave also? Where, Lord, where can we go? Get yourself anointed. Anoint yourself. What you say, what, where are the scriptures for that? Here they are. Leviticus 8, 10 through 12. 2 Corinthians 1, 20 through 22. And... Uh, Psalm 133, verses 1 through 3, Hebrews 1, 9, John 3, 34. That's enough. You read those scriptures. Get anointed. Anoint yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep yourself in the love of God. Find a place of prayer. Amen. Do, you, do you get to the place where you love to pray or do your, does your mind drift? Oh, mine does many times. But I've got to, you've got to discipline yourself. Amen. Anoint yourself. Get anointed. Stay with the program. Hallelujah. What about clothe yourself? Here's some scriptures. Exodus 28, 2 through 5. Exodus 29, 4, 7, 29. Psalm 132, verse 16. 2 Chronicles, chapter 6, verse 41. Colossians 3, 12. Enough there. To get you studying on your own, clothe yourself. Put off anger. Put on humility. 
Clothe yourself with humility. No boasting here. No patting yourself on the back. But clothe yourself with the garments of salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah indeed. Just stop for a moment. Lift up your hands and thank God that you can wash yourself, anoint yourself, clothe yourself, deliver yourself, examine yourself, prove yourself. Oh, there's so many more. All right. Hallelujah. James chapter 4. Here's where the rubber hits the road. Hebrews, James. James chapter 4. And verse 7 through 10. Submit yourselves. You do it. It can't be demanded. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You can rebuke the devil all you want. And he's going to be right on your doorstep if you can't submit yourself. Amen. He'll never leave. As a matter of fact, let me share with you this thought. The word, the prefix S-U-B, sub. If, sub. if something is subterranean, it's what? Under the earth. Submarine, it's under the water. Submission, it's under a mission. You're under a mission. If you don't have a vision, find somebody that does. Amen. Submit to that vision and you'll get the blessings and the rewards of that vision, even though it's not yours. But checklist, reality, showtime. Paul went to Philippi. He got beaten and thrown in jail because he had a vision. He was looking for a man. There was a man in the Macedonian vision, and believe me, it was that vision that brought a lot of us into this message because it was a bridgeway to Europe. And the Macedonian vision opened the gospel up to Europe. But When Paul got the rewards, Silas got the rewards. But when Paul got the beating with the cat of nine tails, guess what? Who else got it? Silas. Hey, Silas, are you with me? <laughs> As the lash crossed his back and his back was bleeding. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm with you. Thrown into the inner security cell of the prison. Yeah. Hallelujah. And Paul probably looked out through the bars that night when the shift changed. He said, Silas, oh my God. Silas, that, that man, oh, the jailer, oh my God. That's the man I saw in the vision. God had to let us deliver a girl with a spirit of divination, which is python, Hallelujah, we started a church at Lydia's house, went down to the river, baptized them. I was looking for the man, but all the while, God had to give me a beating to get me in this jail so that I could meet the man. Amen. That was, honest to God, that was, that happened to me up on a ladder. I saw that. I said, God, I always wondered who the man was. If we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord will test you. Prove yourself. Amen. Submit yourself. That's what it says here. Verse 7. Submit yourselves. 
Then uh, verse 8, draw near to God and he'll what? Draw near to you. Cleanse your hands. Cleanse yourself, you sinners. Purify yourselves, your hearts, you double-minded. Double-mindedness means a man with two souls, two minds. Get one mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You see, there is one thing that I am aware of today. That the scripture says my body and my spirit belong to God. Amen. But I've got a soul up here and that's where the battleground is. Amen. Right between your ears in this carnal mind. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says, guess what? I don't want your mind. You say, really? No. He wants you to have his. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, can you lay your head on, hand on your head and say, God, let this mind, just pray it out to yourself. Let this mind be yours, Lord. I want your mind. Tell the Lord that you want him. Hallelujah. Submit yourselves. Humble yourselves. Purify yourselves. Hallelujah. Cleanse yourselves. Verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. You can ask God all you want from now till kingdom come to humble you, and he won't do it. He says, humble yourself. That's, that's your job. Hallelujah. I see that you're all real happy today. <laughs> Jumping up and down. And... <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, Romans chapter 6. Um, I'll tell you what. We can quit or we can go on, depending on what you want to do. What time, time frame? Okay. Let's go to Romans. And then I'll skip some verses, but I'll give them to you. Okay. Romans chapter 6. Verse 11 through 13. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Amen. You reckon yourself. You've got to reckon it. You've got to have a made up mind. Mm -hmm. I'm reckoning myself dead to sin. Amen. I'm not going that direction. Hallelujah. Satan's a defeated foe. Reckon yourself dead. Amen. That reckoning, you've got to do it. Nobody can do it for you. I, you know, I could tell you, I do a great impersonation of Elvis Presley. <laughs> Have you ever seen me do Elvis Presley? <laughs> You, some of you in the back may have to stand up. But this was Elvis Presley at the end. <laughs> He's gone. He's dead. And I, I had the privilege on Wednesday night being picked up by Jason Uzzel and went over to their house, had a lovely meal, but at the end of the meal, there was presented to me coconut cream pie. <laughs> and you could say, Elvis, come on, have some pie, and it's to die for. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you could say, Elvis, come on, come on. Wake up, wake up. He can't. He's dead. Amen. He's dead. Amen. Put a roast beef dinner in front of him like I had over at the Jennings Hotel. Yeah. I'm telling you, Mary Lee, that was something else. Just wonderful. Anybody getting hungry? 
I mean, you talk about that gravy and those potatoes and the asparagus and the broccoli. Uh, Brian, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we were in competition on seconds. <laughs> but more seriously, reckon yourself dead to sin. The allurements of the enemy. You do that. Strengthen yourself. Develop spiritual muscle. Resist the powers Amen. of darkness and the allurements of the enemy. There comes a time in the life of Moses where he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing Amen. rather to suffer affliction with the people of God rather to enjoy, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He reckoned himself Amen. dead to that way of life. How about you? How about me? Reckon yourself. And then in verse 13, neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but what? Yield, yield yourselves. You do it. You yield to God. Now, last night and then again this morning, we were asked to either come forward, kneel and pray, and seek the will of God for a moment. We, we haven't done that for a long time, probably. But that's how you yield to God. Amen. You yield at an altar of prayer, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And now, these are the ones that I'm going, uh, we're going to go to one more scripture at the end. I'm going to give you these for you to write down so that you can copy them and read them on your own. Deuteronomy 2, 3 through 5. <clears throat> take heed to yourself. I'll go through the take heeds. Deuteronomy 4, 23 and 24. Deuteronomy 11. 16 through 19, take heed to yourself. Exodus 32, 29, consecrate yourself. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful to have been raised in a church that had an altar. Amen. And I know many times it was just Pavlovian response. Play the invitational, tears come down, go to the altar. My rededicating button burned out. I pushed it, it so many times. But I thank God that there were times in which hands were laid on me. A transference of authority was given to me. My mom and my dad came down and laid their hands on me and kept me. I don't want to sin against God. I don't want to do things that displease my father. It's a lot because my mom, hallelujah, Jesse and Frank, immigrant children from Austria and the Ukraine, laid their hands on their boy. My younger brother, was serving the Lord when he passed away. My older brother's serving the Lord today. All my four children, maybe everything isn't right in my relationship with them, but I'll tell you what, they're all serving the Lord. Amen. They're being used of God. And listen, what we can do is cultivate that yieldedness and that dedication and that consecration to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And assist them in their walk with God. Now, in Job 20, oh, excuse me, Jude 20 and 21, it's only one chapter. I want you to turn there. And this morning, hallelujah. Let's look at Jude. Hallelujah. 20, and 21, 24, 
and 25. But you, beloved, building what? Building up yourself. In what? In the most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. I'll tell you what. If anything will build you up, it's praying in the Holy Spirit. I am not ashamed of the Holy Spirit and what God did in my life. Hallelujah. A lot of people today, and hey, I don't want anything about those, that, those tongues, but when you get in a prayer language in God, hallelujah, it'll keep you in your hour of trial, in your hour of extremity. When you go through a valley of sorrow, you don't know how long that valley is going to be, but I'm telling you what, it's praying in the Holy Ghost that will build yourself up. Amen. Hallelujah. And then it says, building yourselves up. Most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And then what? Keep yourselves in the love of God. Say, God, you keep me. No, you keep yourself. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Keep yourself in the love of God. Amen. Don't allow negative thoughts to overwhelm you <clears throat> and get you out of sorts, get you out of a right thinking. Amen. Paul had to do that. In first, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 1, he said, I would not have you to be ignorant concerning the troubles which came to us in Asia, how that we were pressed out of measure above strength, despairing even of life. The sentence of death was upon us. God, I wanted to die. People left me. Went through terrible, torturous beatings. They left me for dead underneath the rock pile. But the saints came around. All of a sudden, a hand comes up out of those rocks. It's praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Keep yourself in God's love. Hallelujah. 